everybody. Welcome in. Today is day four of our Who's Next series. I'm Tyler Waldrop here with Tony, and we're just going to jump right into it. We're talking Mike Leach today, now at Mississippi State. Tony, you know, he's got kind of a unique take on the offense. He's going to sling it, and that's pretty much all he's going to do. Can that type of air raid philosophy actually work in the SEC West? Yeah, I'm sure interested to see if it can or not, because it's fun to watch. Um, I don't know. I, I, You know, there's a lot of things with, with Mike Leach. I is his, is his person not what's his personality going to be like in the SEC? Will that match in? And then also this offense as well. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Lane Kiffin, but I think Mike Leach might bring the most excitement both on mm-hmm. and off the field uh, to the SEC uh, as far as the new coaches that are coming in. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm much more personally excited about Lane Kiffin I, just based on how the success he had as an offensive coordinator at Alabama, what he did at Florida Atlantic, his Obviously, his tweets. I'm excited to see all of that continue at an SEC school. Um, but yeah, I mean, just from a like national perspective, the country is going to be a lot more interested in the Mike Leach press conferences. Um, SEC Media Days is going to be, you know, weird this year. But I think I'm, even though I, I I'm more excited about Kiffin, I'm a lot more excited to watch whatever Mike Leach says than what Kiffin says when we get there. Yeah, Mike Leach might have made it weird no matter what. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be, yeah, I mean, it's kind of just going to be a, a, a complete wild card, you know, I, I and I think that's kind of his perception. That's his style. That's what he wants. I, uh, I saw, I think yesterday he's recording. If you pay him a hundred dollars, he will send you a video of like a personal video message from him of him. Like, wishing you happy birthday or encouraging you to study for an exam. Like, so, you know, maybe, maybe next time I'm, I'm running late on deadline and I'm pushing a project, I just need to pay Mike Leach a hundred dollars to tell me I can do it. <laughs> hey, I mean, that actually be pretty fun. I don't know. I don't know that Mike Leach needs a hundred dollars, so I don't really know what his end game here is, but if he wants to do that, I guess that's, that's his prerogative. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's playing the long game. Maybe somehow wishing everyone in America happy birthday will help him in recruiting three years from now. Yeah. Uh, just, just to kind of jump in, though, because the point of this series is to break down these coaches and, and what it means for Alabama and the conference. Can Leach's style of play actually work? Like, I know we talked about it earlier, but just to actually dive into that conversation a little more, like, is that something that we think can have success? Because the SEC as a whole is passing a lot more than it was eight, 10 years ago. So it's not uncommon, but teams aren't throwing it 50 to 60 times a game. And, and that's what Leach has uh, done at Washington State. Yeah, 50 to 60. But I mean, you saw LSU threw it. They spread it around. Now them is starting to throw it more. I mean, it's the game's kind of going to that way, maybe not to that extreme. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the game's kind of moving in that direction. And, you know, from what I've seen of the air raid, it, it they do a lot. It's almost like you, you run the ball through passing, right? So it'll mm-hmm. be like a short little screen pass. That, that's almost like a running play. If you do it the right way, you have the right perimeter blocking, you know, you can, you can move the ball systematically through the air um, and then be able to, you know, catch opposing defenses, you know, napping or, you know, maybe exploit them on a, on a big deep ball. And so yeah, it's worked for him pretty much everywhere he's been. Um, so I, you would think that, you know, especially with the, the way the game's progressing, that it, it could theoretically work in Mississippi State as well. Yeah, so just I think my answer would be twofold. I think it depends on what you consider work. If the goal is win the, you know, somehow win the West, make it to Atlanta at some point, then I, I think it's it's going to be hard to do it with with – you know, with that, I just don't think, I think when you consider the talent the program's going to have and that offense, I don't think that offense is unique enough to win the West, but I do think you maybe get the, a slight advantage similar to maybe how Georgia Tech used to, uh, you know, upset some big teams every couple of years. And, and sometimes it's just because teams don't, you know, they didn't prepare for the option week in and week out. So you're going to catch people um, not napping, but not ready. Yeah. You know, it also depends on the, the players you have too, right? I mean, if you get a great quarterback in there and he's got some good receivers to throw to, I, I think, you know, it becomes a pretty deadly, a pretty deadly offense. If you can, you know, he's been able to put points on the board. So, I mean, if he could, if he could do that and maybe recruit a good enough defense to kind of hold other teams at bay a little bit, he, he could win a bunch of shootouts. I mean, he's probably going to give up points just because 
you know, we've seen what happens when the defense can't get off the field or even when you're scoring so fast. And I'm sure he's going to put up points and he's going to give up points on the other way around. But if you can put together a defense that's capable and then, you know, find the right quarterback and receivers, it, he could be a real pain in the side. And who knows, maybe, you know, we've seen it before where teams get hot. Um, the right combination, he, he could turn Mississippi State into a team you really don't want to, you really don't want to play. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree with that. I think, um, you know, it, he can develop the program enough, tune the system a little bit. And, and I think it's it's a unique enough flavor offense that he runs that I think he could absolutely upset it, it, three or four years from now. I think he could be the type of team that upsets anyone in the SEC. They're averagely, you know, third in the co- finishing around third in the conference because, you know, they upset A&M or LSU or Alabama or whichever team should have been the third best team. And, and, and they kind of stole that spot from them. So I agree with that. Speaking of, uh, you know, great quarterback play, which is what you said you're going to need. They have KJ Costello, which is a name I recognize, but I didn't know why until I looked up his stats um, was hurt a lot last year. So didn't play a whole lot for Stanford, just threw for a thousand yards, but the year before that threw for 3,500 yards um, you know, attempted 413 passes. So, you know, he's got a full season of work. Mike Leach is going to not, you know, drive those attempts uh, up to like 600 something probably. Um, yeah, he was doing that he wins the job. Stanford's offense. Yeah. Not Washington <laughs> yeah. State's offense. So, I mean, you'd have to expect those numbers, like you said, will go up. And I think it'll be really important for how Costello does in terms of Leach's ability to recruit. Because we just mm-hmm. talked about will his system work in the SEC? Well, if it does – and I'm a, a quarterback in the, you know, in the the as you know in the South and SEC country, and, and and I'm looking at a school, and I know that I'm going to get to throw the ball 40, 50 times a game. I might consider Mississippi State, and you know, before I think you could say that you know, oh, nobody that that offense doesn't produce pros, but I think Garner Minshew at least mm-hmm. proved that you can make it to the NFL with that offense. So, um, I I think you know he he really depending on how the season goes and if he's able to kind of put his plan in, you know, he could really make a recruiting push because I bet you as a passer, as a receiver, as a quarterback, you know, it'd be really fun to play in that offense and, and be involved so much in, in every single game. Yeah. So what Washington state is a difficult place to recruit um, for just a lot of reasons that we don't even have to get into, but I was shocked at how poor he's, he's recruited there considering that he has this national brand as as a, as a kind of a wild guy, but also as a guy who can coach good teams. Uh, but his last full season there, so not this, this past class, but 2019, they were 62. And before that, they were 46. And then the Cougars were 51. So it's a hard place to recruit. But, you know, it seems like maybe whatever he brings into Mississippi State is going to be based on how attractive people want, or how much people want to play for Miss State and maybe not him. I don't th- – I mean, so you need probably a few elite playmakers. Like, I just said mm-hmm. that, you know. But y- there's some players that with that system can kind of help them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If you get – you know – and I also think that, you know, the the leftovers in, in Mississippi are going to be way better than the leftovers in Washington yes. or even yes. in that area up there. Yes. So, you know, you might get a three-star – you know, a low-ranked three-star receiver who could really make a difference uh, – in that offense and really catches on to that offense and somebody that they can utilize. And so I think that's probably the hope there is that, yeah, he's not, you know, an ace recruiter and he's probably not going to, he's probably not even going to beat uh, Kiffin for the, the big in time state in state recruits, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I mean, Kiffin's a great recruiter, but if he can find guys that, that work in his offense and then he can start selling his offense is like, you know, Hey, come to, you know, Mississippi mm-hmm. state and catch, you know, a hundred passes for mm-hmm. 1500 yards, you know I mean? Then it's kind of like, Oh wow. You know, I, maybe I'll do that. You know? And so I think that's where it really starts for him. Yeah. And just to kind of expand on that point uh, in terms of the talent pool, Mississippi state is working with uh, Mississippi states averaged exactly 20 finishes exactly 25th over their four year average. So they were 25th, 23rd, 25th and 27th going back. So, yeah, if he can get close to that or even meet that, then you'd have to think he's going to have more success than he had at Wazoo. And, he, you know, he was 55 and 47 there, and that's with, you know, some early years kind of bringing that record down a little more than maybe it should. 
Sure, yeah. And he'll have talented. It seems like he's, you know, good. Tyrell Shavers, for example, is coming in this year. Mm -hmm. So it'd be exciting to see. You know, he's, he's bringing in grad transfers into his program. I think that'll give him some established players and players, I guess, he thinks he could work in his system. And then I think from there, he'll be able to build um, his team up, you know, through its core players and stuff with, with his guys and people that, you know, that he thinks is is going to work. And so I'm really interested to see how Tyrell Shavers is going to mm. do. It's the guy that, you know, we've been waiting to see what he's going to do at Alabama. And now we'll at least get a chance to, to monitor him in the conference. Yeah. And you know, anyone who's watched us talk or, or read the stuff we wrote earlier in the offseason, we basically spent the whole spring, you know, imagining what Tyrell Shavers could do for Alabama in the red zone. We both thought that he was a lock to be that sort of fourth receiver and that there was a chance he could move into the top three. I mean, I think he, yeah. he could definitely have a huge impact for Mississippi State. Yeah, he was in our top 40. He was number 40, but he was in our top 40, um, you know, most impactful players. So definitely a guy we thought could make a difference for Alabama, and I, I think he can make a difference for Mississippi State as well. And I, I think, uh, like, what it was it, four hours after, Tony, you posted the top 40, Shavers announced he was leaving. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> But I think, like I said, I think it's a good fit for him. And I think, you know, um, he'll have two years, too. So, so if he doesn't mm -hmm. do it in this year, he'd, you know, he'll probably, he'll probably put up some big numbers over there in Starkville. Okay, so, you know, we mentioned Shavers. But speaking of Alabama in general, how do we expect the Crimson Tide and the Mississippi State game to kind of go in 2020? That's not a game that I'm looking ahead and going, oh, yeah, I think that's going to be another one of those competitive. It'll be different this year because, I mean, look, look at that game in the past. In November, it was always, like, right after LSU. For whatever reason, I mean, look, look at Tua last year, the other years, too. It seems like there was injuries in that game. It was a game where, like, just you left kind of battered and bruised. It was physical. Now, you know, it's getting moved up in the season. Um, it's not after LSU anymore. It's after Arkansas. And and I'm not sure how it's physical is going to be. I don't know what Mike Leach is, you know – game plan is i don't know if it, mm. you know he doesn't seem like he's the most physical coach so it'll be a mm. different style of game right i mean it'll be earlier in the season it might be more of a shootout uh it could be a game that alabama could get you know maybe taken off guard you know mm -hmm. it, it might be able to catch them more sleeping but uh but yeah i think alabama kind of gets the advantage in this game for this game being moved up as mm -hmm. opposed to having to play it you know in the slog of november like they normally do yeah, absolutely. I, I think, uh, you know, there's been some, uh, I might have even written something a couple of years back, but, I, you know, basically every year someone is going to write the story. We, we've done it before that, you know, is there this hangover effect after LSU? And there's some anecdotal evidence that suggests yes, but then there's a lot of evidence that would say no. And I think the, I think the thing is playing a, a, a team after a tough game is going to be hard, and depending on how the team feels and the injuries, sometimes it's going to matter. And I think Mississippi State did at least benefit from that. Um, but, yeah, I, with how we view Arkansas and then Alabama is going to play Tennessee the week after, um, what we think – or at least what I think of Tennessee, um, I, I don't think where this game falls in the schedule is going to cause any problems with Alabama, either mentally looking ahead – or any mental or physical fatigue from the Arkansas game. Um, I, I, I don't think Mississippi State's going to benefit at all from where this uh, showdown is with Alabama. Yeah, it'll simply be the, – the, their best chance of this is that it's, you know, they're going to catch them off guard perhaps, but the game's also going to be in tough school. So, so next year is, might be tough sledding for, for Mike Leach in his first, you know, matchup against Nick Saban. Yeah, and, and then just to close out, you know – Mike Leach is a guy who has a lot of, like I said, a lot of respect around the country. I think people view him as, you know, obviously what he did with Texas Tech, what he's done with Washington State. He has this reputation as a guy who can elevate these programs who are traditionally in, you know, fourth, fifth in their divisions or you know, Texas Tech's case, you know, lower in their conference. Can he elevate Mississippi State in, into a, a top three, top two contender the way Washington state was every two or three years? I would say that he probably, you know, has, has at least a shot at it. Right. It, it all depends on how that system works, but um, you know, if, if he can get things clicking the way he has, I mean, you know, he made Texas tech a contender. Um, so he's a guy I think I, I have some faith in, and I think he's going to be, I think both Mississippi coaches, but you know, 
especially him, uh, is that they could develop, you know, and in, in, we might see a resurgence in the state of Mississippi in the, in the next few years. I can tell you one thing. I am ready to – I mean, I'm always ready to watch the Apple Cup – or not the Apple Cup, the Egg Bowl. But I am ready to watch the Egg Bowl this year. I think. It's oh, it, that should one. be – that's the best part of it. <laughs> uh, that's that, – that just – that rivalry just took another step up uh, this year. Yeah, I mean, who thought that the rivalry could take a step up after last year's game? But I right, yeah. Think it does. I mean, that, that rivalry might be at an all-time high when you look at uh, where it is and just uh, recent events and – I, I have that one circled, definitely. Yeah, so uh, Tony and I will be watching the Egg Bowl. We'll probably be live tweeting that. Just look for that uh, in November. <laughs> yeah.